Sometimes I am asked extremely difficult questions, ones that I don't think I am qualified enough to talk about, others where I can't come up with a clear conclusion, and this is a very good example. I feel like this is the kind of question I could pose to all of you, and I think as a community we can pull together ideas, come up with some good thoughts around this topic. Even at this point, I can't come up with a clear answer, but I am going to try and dabble in many different areas and bring some solutions forward, hopefully. MCD asked the question, what precisely is the difference between a stylistic choice that has been hyped up over time and one with intrinsic legitimacy and merit? In other words, one not hyped up. So I'm thinking for the title of this video, it'll be something along the lines of hype versus reality. It's a very multi-layered question and there's no clear answer to this that I think would satisfy everything. But to begin, before even looking at the question, we need to focus on value because we all perceive things very differently in this area. Value for some can be linked to the watch's history, to its price tag, to its sentimental aspects. Others see these watches as commodities to put their money in so they can maybe one day sell them and make a profit. But one truth that I think is so important with this subject is the sense of value that is guided by popularity is an illusion. And sadly, this platform always discusses the pieces that are popular because that's what gets attention. That's the hot topic. And actually, they cause the most amount of debate and discourse, which also brings in the attention in a different way. But because of platforms like social media, where we see the same watch, the same subject repeated again and again, of course it becomes popular. Because people tell you the object is good, therefore it must be good, right? Repetition can be a very dangerous thing. So rehashing the same subject over and over again, eventually it does get ingrained into your head that, yes, maybe there is some legitimacy to this argument. And the more people that jump onto the bandwagon and agree, so the snowball turns into an avalanche. But if we are looking at it from a design point of view and referring to the, the reality of how well a good design can communicate itself so clearly that it eventually does become extremely popular for the right reasons. How do we find this divide? How can we justify it? It feels very much like some of the most popular watches do manage to ride this line of being both really competent with their designs, but also are extremely hyped up because of it. It's a catch-22. So some great examples, you know, the Rolex Submariner, the Datejust, the GMT, all legitimate when we look at their design competence next to how popular they have become because of it. Omega and the Speedmaster, a watch that not only looks extremely competent, built to be a professional's instrument, but at the same time is extremely well designed and legible, also fashionable. The watch that I think perpetuated this trend the most, and yes, it's cliche, but the AP Royal Oak. What this watch managed to do pretty much by itself was popularize steel as a luxury material. The integrated case and bracelet became a subject and a theme that was then pushed into every area of the Swiss watchmaking industry all the way through the 1970s and beyond. We've seen how these 1970s influences have been rehashed and are still being used today. And I will add, are extremely hyped up and popular because of it. So I think for this talk we can focus more to the, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak as the, the underlying subject matter because that watch not only has a lot of legitimacy to its design, but also is extremely hyped for what it is. We could say in this category of watches that are spoken about all the time, it set the hype train in motion. I think one of the most important elements is influence. How has this design influenced the zeitgeist, pop culture, the everyday person? And with these parentheses icons, we notice they all have a similar relationship there. In a way, we've seen these watches on the wrists of movie stars. We've seen them in adverts. Over time, we've seen how competent their designs are, to an extent where they are 50 years old and still look as competent now as they did all that time ago. So in answering this question as succinctly as possible, hype and the reality of stylistic choices rides a very fine line. They are influential because they are great and are great because they are influential. More details to add to this, we can look at things like, you know, beyond popularity, we look at function and performance. How well does it address its purpose? Does it attack the problem in such a good way that it is not only successful, but also long-lasting? The industrial designer will always quote Dieter Rams's 10 principles of good design. 
and it might be a very impactful set of instructions around the subject. Good design is innovative, makes a product useful, is aesthetic, makes a product understandable, is unobtrusive, is honest, is long-lasting, is thorough to the last detail, is environmentally friendly, and is as little design as possible. So we look at the pieces that are on the screen and in a way feel that translated into these products. At the end of the day, watches are products like everything else. Stylistically, they manage to communicate their purpose very well, possibly attack these innovative avenues with a bit of an avant-garde approach. In the end, they appeal to all of us in one way or another. And because of that, so the hype train keeps rolling. I believe that we find the legitimacy to these watches ourselves. And you shouldn't be lectured to about what is considered legitimate and worth merit. The better thing to do is do your own research. Try to understand the inner workings about why this watch was created and what was its purpose. And more importantly, did it satisfy this purpose? Is it because of this reason that the watch has been able to last as long as it has? Fantastic question. One that I could probably spend another half an hour talking about, but I think the comments will probably ring a lot truer and give some more concise answers about this subject. Of course, it's polarizing, but I think we can all agree that stylism and stylistic choices is a double-edged sword. Not all of it is accepted or agreed upon, but we can understand that it does have some merit, a small amount, when we talk about these watches.